Young man, will you give us your name, please? My name is Whirly Meeks. I'm from Gastonia, North Carolina. I'm 72 years old. And uh, I ended up here at uh, Pastor Moses' uh, homeless site. Uh, my circumstances is not from drugs or or alcohol or anything like that. It was it was just bad luck, I would say, or just or just where God wanted me to be at Mr. this time of my life. And uh, I uh, lost my home last October to a bar, and uh, that put me out in the streets because I was I was living by myself and alone. And uh, my brother, I have a younger brother. He lives with uh, his uh, son in Dallas, North Carolina. He didn't have no place for me to stay with him. So I, I called my cousin in Kent, North Carolina to see if he would uh, let me stay with him for a while. Well, yes, he uh, said I could come up and stay with him for a while. He's pretty well off. I wouldn't say he was a millionaire, but he's pretty close to being a millionaire. He lives in a nice home, he's got maids and stuff. And when I went up, I had a little service dog with me. That service dog is, uh, was trained to smell when I have a, my, my body to pour if, if I was going to have a seizure or not, before my my veins go up and down, and he was trained to do that, so I had to take my dog with me. And he told me, he said, "Well, I'm going to let let you have the dog in the house. and never had one in his house before, and he lives in quite a nice hot, nice home." And uh, he had this. Uh, I was up there maybe three months staying with him, but he had this maid coming in twice a week cleaning up. Well, the maid got mad because she was uh, having to clean up behind my dog the, the fur and other thing, so uh, she quit. And when, uh, when she quit, he told me I was going to have to get rid of my dog uh, and I was going to have to take over the position of being his maid. Well, I said, for well, one thing, I said, I'm not getting rid of my dog. And I said, I, I do do housework. I clean up by, uh, behind myself and stuff like that. I said, I, I didn't mind that, but I didn't want to be his maid. So uh, I left. Um, I got my brother come back up there to pick me up. He come up there and got me. He said, where are you going to stay at? I said, well, I said, there ain't one place for me to go. And I said, there's a homeless camp down here in Gastonia, and I ended up, this is where I ended up at. And I've been here since, uh, let's see, May, June. Been here since May. Mr. Worley, how old are you? I'm 72 years old. And I can't say, it's, it's been rough when I first got here. It's, uh, it, but, I'm surviving it. I'm surviving it. Lord's taking good care of me. And is it dangerous out here for you? Uh, well, I'd say it, it's not. It's not dangerous. It's just not healthy for me at my age. It. Uh, I caught pneumonia the first of the month and had to be in a, had to be hospitalized. And and when I got out of the hospital, I tried to go back to my my tent, but I couldn't uh, couldn't sleep on that ground because I still had the pneumonia and that, I wasn't getting no better. So the Pastor Moses uh, let me go stay with uh, with his deacon, deacons here in Gastonia to get me off the ground. So to explain, they take a uh, a man like me. Uh, I have a a good heart or try to have a good heart and I try to be good to 
all the people, not just one, even the bad people or the good people. It doesn't matter to me. I said, if they need something, I'm willing to give. But they seen how much uh, that I was so easy and so and so open-hearted with them. They took advantage of me and was actually ripping me off, and I wasn't, and I was naive to that. But um, uh, Pastor Moses, he at last uh, got me out of my tent and into a place I could uh, feel more safe without getting without getting my money and and my cigarettes or whatever stolen from me. Uh, when I first went into the hospital, my tent. I was in there four days. When I got back, my tent was gone. Somebody else had got it and was living in it. So I had to go get it back. When I got it back, they were supposed to put it back up for me, but they never did. And so it got gone again. I'm going to stay here to, uh, to I get better. And I'm standing around a whole lot better people now. I'm standing around uh, the deacons of this church. I'm living with them right now. They're uh, taking good care of me. I, I thank God for them. And I thank God for Pastor Moses for uh, letting me come down here to stay and feed me. And he is one of the most wonderful one men I've ever met in my life. <laughs> of course, all the people that work here, that volunteer their time here, uh, they're worth their weight in gold. Do you deal with addiction? No, I don't have no. The only addict that that I did have was smoking marijuana, and I'm not having that uh, addiction now because I'm quit quitting that. I don't have no. At one time in my life, I was a drug addict. Yes, I I got to say I did deal with addiction. What was your uh, drug of choice? Well, uh, cocaine. Who introduced you to it? My, well, it was uh, the part in my lifestyle and the part in I'd done back when I was a younger man. Uh, I got introduced to it that way. How long do you, how long do you do cocaine? I would say I'd done it, I'd say at least 10 years. I was hooked on it pretty bad. And uh, whenever I I quit doing doing drugs, I just I just quit. I got off of it, but with the Lord's help, I got off of it. Is this is this homeless lifestyle? Is it dangerous? I, it might be for some people, but for a person like me, I I. I wouldn't say it was dangerous. It's a little bit scary sometimes, but dangerous? No, there's good people down in there, and there's bad people. But yeah, I tried a couple of times to quit, and, and I did fail, and then I'd go back on it, and then uh, eventually I did uh, I did get off of it because my family needed me, and I had to get off of it for them. Like my father, my sister, she had cancer, and I had to take care of her, and I couldn't do that doing cocaine and doing drugs. So that's what more or less got me off of it was my my sister. She helped me get off of it. What would you like people to know about addiction? Addiction is uh, your worst enemy. You 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 love it. And, to start with, you'll, you'll love it. And the more you do it, the more you see it's just going to just eat up all your money. It's going to eat up your lifestyle. It, it interferes with your life. It interferes with your your marriage if you're married. Uh, it, this addiction is, is, is really bad. It's really bad. You're doing something, but you're not really doing that, but hurting yourself and the other people and the people that love you.